Welcome back to another BTD6 video. My name is Raxor and today we're exploring BTD6 Rogue. Except we're going as far as possible. Shout out to Mendev for the mod. And I'm terribly sorry if I sound a little awful because I am. Uh, I'm a little bit sick, but you know what? People say to rest, but you know what? All I do when I rest is play BTD6 anyway, so you guys get more content and I'm excited to get it out. So. A few things to note if you've never seen uh, the roguelike before, it's been a lot of on a lot of popular channels. Uh, this changes the regular game to a complete roguelike, where you pick towers as they come. So bosses appear every 20 rounds, and every round that ends in a 5, you usually get to pick a new tower. This normally goes until round 20, where there's one final boss, and after you beat the final boss, you're essentially stuck with whatever towers you chose for the rest of the game. So we're going to start off, we're going to do this on popable mode, which is even easier than easy. Didn't know this was a thing, but I guess I guess uh, the creator made this so that uh, bosses are easier and overall towers are just much cheaper. So people who want to kind of get into it. So first two attempts, I'm not going to lie, were pretty bad. <laughs> I tried uh, Sada with some snipers. I also tried some random towers and realized I had no idea what I was doing. I'm only good at late game on easy standard. I have no idea what's going on here. Also, I had another attempt where I realized you also can't reload your save files. So basically, I have to do this all in one go. So we start with a hero and I always pick Ben here because usually Ben is great to start farming early on. You also get a tower choice and I wasn't sure what to go for so I actually settle for Beast Handler because Adasaurus plus Horned Owl gets you camo and lead popping power so you're usually good for quite a while. Huh, what's this first thing? Dampness fields, dampness fills the battlefields, balloons can see coated in a slimy sheen? What kind of sticky stuff are the only boss I really need to worry about to be honest is Dread Balloon because if I'm missing a tower type. Uh, if you only have one type of a tower, such as military or primary, then you won't really be able to do any damage to Dread Balloon due to immunity. So every round that ends in a 5 will actually give you a new tower as well. So boat looking mighty good, so we actually go uh, boat. Uh, I only get a 220 or a 202, or sorry, 022. I wasn't sure which one to go for, uh, so we'll just keep it for now. Maybe I'll get something good. On round 15, mm, I don't like the first options. Let's try and reroll here. Ooh, the second one's here is good. So village is great late game. It actually helps my boat, so I don't have to go uh, camo. So honestly, need stuff that will be essential for late game, and I think 220 is going to be a huge help. So the first boss is Blunarius. So oh, okay, you know what? That makes sense what the sticky stuff was, but uh, can someone tell me why Blunarius has sticky stuff? Uh, you know what? Actually, don't. I actually don't want to know. Never mind. Anyways, thankfully the boss isn't super hard. Beast Handler and Boat is good enough, and this game mode is easier than easy. And another thing that you may notice here is that the round actually stays on round 20. So I need to have towers that can beat whatever boss before each one comes out, because I'll have no time to get another tower. Moving along, uh, you feel the energy of air currents begin to pick up. Oh, okay, you know what? This one at least isn't slimy, this one is, sounds like Vortex. Alright, so round 25, that happened really fast. Let me slow that down for you. Basically, uh, if you noticed, my cursor was right above my Beast Handler because I was trying to move my Atosaurus right when the menu popped up and damn, that's my fault. Uh, I clicked 030 Spike, which actually isn't the worst though. Uh, Mob Shredder is definitely super helpful against bosses, uh, so not the, not the worst thing in the world. Okay, let's not make that mistake again though, and so before round 35, I I kind of chill this time. Take it easy. Uh, these are okay. Uh, actually, Mib is not bad, but I already have Camo, so I don't really need Mib, to be honest. Uh, oh my god, okay, this is a no-brainer. Uh, 300 Alk is super OP and will definitely help against bosses, so we just get an Alk. So Vortex comes. Um, Vortex actually can't get past my spikes, so... You know what? As much as it was a it was a quick click, uh, it was a really good call. So round 40 is finally over. Uh, I 
Adore is great, but not for the late late game. Uh, I really want Azili, so I'm actually gonna try and reroll here. Oh, thank God. Okay, I get Azili. Okay, so Azili is the best late game popper, especially because we won't have Adora for Sun Temples, right? So an eerie chill fills the air. Uh, that's probably Lich. My defense is looking okay. The problem is I need stuff for late game. These are good for beginning and can hold off for a while. So hopefully we'll get something decent in the next few rolls. Okay, so I really want a Brittle Mint, but I think Super Brittle would be better if I can get it. Ideally, I also want some sort of money maker, so uh, let's reroll into Rubber to Gold is very nice. So actually, I'll go Rubber to Gold, because that will actually make us a lot more money in the long run. Let's fast forward ahead to 55, where mm, Spectre is pretty strong, so let's go Spectre. Ideally, would like to get some sort of Aces for maybe an Ace Paragon. Um, there will be a Paragon later on. I forget which round, but... Uh, I know you get one option at least for it, so. In round 60, it is Lich, just as we thought. Um, okay, so, I mean, I, I, I have pretty solid defense. I have two Spectres, and again, this isn't super expensive, so I'm not worried at all. Uh, I'm also making, surprisingly, a ton of cash, so I think I'm pretty good. 62, the Earth trembles. Okay, that's Dread Balloon, so that's a good thing. Wow, I think I got one of every single boss. I just, I think I just need, uh... Is it phase for the last one? And then I get each one, but yeah, I get one of every boss. Pretty nice. Good thing I have a pretty solid defense. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get something good later on as well. So let's see, 65. Ooh, okay. Uh, so Sky Shredder is great, but Mob Dom seems super tempting. Although I can only get one Mob Dom. The other ones have been uh, Mob Presses will definitely help against maybe some DDTs as well, or even some ZOMGs later on. Uh, we'll get a Mold Press, or Mold Dawn, sorry. On 75, let's see what we get now. Uh, these are alright, I want something better, let's re-roll. Uh, Rhea Doom is alright, maybe Superstorm? Uh, you know what, I'm gonna re-roll again. Okay, so, pause. I messed up here a bit, and I, this is me recording in the future. Uh, I should have actually gotten Energizer in the late game, but I saw Ray of Doom twice and thought, okay, game wants me to take Ray of Doom, fine, but I should have taken Energizer and you'll realize, and I'll, I'll discuss it again later on why. Okay, so in round 80, we get another hero. Uh, again, no Adora, because some Temple Spam is probably not going to happen. Uh, let's reroll and... Oh, okay, you know what? Sai is actually very good. Let's get him. Uh, he'll basically clear anything that isn't a bad. And Azili clears bads, so these two actually will synergize quite well. 85, we go and... okay, nothing great to be honest, let's re-roll. Um, okay, so I'm not loving any of these, but hindsight, I think I... So I end up going for Moab Elim, but I should have maybe gone for Plasma Monkey Fan Club, because they actually do a lot more damage in the long run. On round 90, we get a choice of a Paragon. Ooh, Boomerang, Ninja, or... Ah, uh, uh, Goliath Doomship. Okay, so I already got Spectres already, so this will definitely help with degrees, so let's go. On round 95, we finally get some farming. Um, we get Monkeynomics, which is better than nothing. And actually, you know what? With IMF farming plus Ben, Ben actually gives banks uh, extra bonus cash. So you know what? This is actually surprisingly good synergy. Alright, so around 100, uh, I'm not even going to talk about this. Like, look how fast this destroys... This absolutely just dominates Blue Narius. Like, uh, okay, that's that's done. Okay, next. So 105, I don't like my first set. Uh, second set, we get a Monkey Obelis, which is not bad. So I get this for more farming. Uh, I got a lot of farming towers a little later than I'd like, but you know what, that's okay, because at this point, I also do need to make some money for my Goliath. 115, hopefully we get something good. Okay, so I instant pick Super Brittle here, no questions asked. Okay, so this is a pretty good setup. Technically, most of the damage is Psy, Zeely, and Goliath Doomship. So this is a pretty good combo. And I also go Geraldo on 120 for my last hero choice. Hopefully, this will do well. And Geraldo with Totems also could give a few more degrees for Goliath as well. Oh, but this is a surprise. On round 125, we actually get another one. I thought this was done, but no, uh, oh, honestly, Homeland is super tempting, and I wasn't sure though, so I reroll, and actually I get Avatar Wrath, which is not bad at all. Comes with four other Druid, 
just one druid short of max stacks. Honestly, pretty good. Uh, and you know what? At this point, I don't know if you remember, I had a Superstorm earlier. Uh, makes me wish I actually went Superstorm because this would also help with the stacks as well. Uh, it's so hard to predict though. You can never predict because it literally generates random towers, right? So 135. Oh, we still get one last one. I have a feeling this is going to be the last one though. Um, nothing here is great. Reroll and... Okay, you know what? We'll go for Spirit of the Forest here because... We need more cash, and I need a farm for Goliath Doomship as well. Because even though this is uh, much easier, Goliath Doomship is still 600k. Okay, so that's quite expensive. By round 145, everything's basically set up. Let's keep going and see how far we can go with this for now. By 173, I die. I actually get my Goliath after selling everything, and we get a degree 73 on round 173. Oh, pretty fitting. Anyways, I, get, I slowly start getting everything back up, starting with my farms, because Goliath can solo for mostly a while, as well as Sai and Azili. And again, 200 is super easy with Azili, thank goodness, so you don't have to worry about anything. Finally, we go into 200s and I'm trying my best. I really hope this can make 300. I don't know if it's possible, but we're, you know what? We're going to try. And at this point, this is where I'm wishing I went Energizer because having Energizer for Azealia's cooldown is pretty crucial. Uh, it would have been better than Ray of Doom. By round 228, we're still chilling. I decided to buy a few more totems again and the reason for this is I thought that maybe I can get a higher degree with the new aces farming pops then maybe I can go a bit further with maybe hopefully getting a degree 100 uh, goliath doomship. Let's see if we can get it though. And 247 we die again. Ugh, we're so close to 250. You know what I really want 250 at least. Let me rebuy my ace paragon really quick and degree 80. Okay, nice. Okay, so another huge spike in power should at least give us at least three more rounds, and thankfully it does. Uh, but we do die shortly after on round 252. This was close, but I'm not gonna lie, this was an extremely fun run. I think I'm gonna keep attempting these until I can hit 300. It seems, it seems possible with Azili, Sai, uh, and a good Paragon, uh, I, but I'm not sure. We'll have to keep testing and, and playing around with this. Surprisingly, I leave this on Sai because, again, he's great to help with DDTs right before they leak. You just use Sai's level 10 ability and everything will just stop moving. I think Azili Sai is a pretty broken combo because, again, Azili focuses on bad, Sai cleans up everything else. If you guys enjoyed this, please let me know if you want me to try other maps too. I'm going to keep just trying and going until I reach around 300. Um, but yeah, I'll do di different difficulties as well for sure because I think that'll be a lot of fun. Don't forget to use code Raxor in the BTD6 shop if you're purchasing something, and as always, I will see you all in the next video.